Hello everyone, my name is Decidedly... What? <laughs> my name is Decidedly Vanilla? I am... I am... Dis I am become Decidedly Vanilla. Welcome back to Decidedly Vanilla. My name is Pixorifs. There we go, bit of an identity crisis. Start of the episode, always good. Welcome back. I was completely wrong about the people on this server. Mainly, <laughs> it was a misunderstanding. I thought nobody had bought any blocks from the shop because I looked in the payment chest and there weren't any... There weren't any payment. <laughs> there was no payment in the in the payment chest at the block shop. Turns out they've been leaving payment in the chests and they have bought my entire stock. I have a feeling this is Lloyd, to be honest. I have a feeling it's to do with the construction of the nether hub. But in any case, we have ourselves an absolute ton except for the bone blocks. I was thinking, oh, there's going to be there's going to be loads in the bone blocks. No, nobody needs bone blocks. You can get them for free from the skeleton spawner. I understand, completely understand, but thank you so much for 33 iron blocks that is absolutely nuts and that's probably a product let's face it of the iron farms loy has been working on speaking of stuff loy has been working on look at this fabulous structure this thing is incredible looking and is that clay or is that bone block or is that something else i can't i can't really tell it's it's night time so i'm not really sure but this is his diamond pickaxe shop and if you drop a diamond here magical things happen. I, I'm actually, I don't need a new diamond pickaxe because all of my stuff has mending, but I'm still going to drop in a diamond and check it out because that looks like a very intriguing concept, ladies and gentlemen. And I think I have a few diamonds sitting around spare over here at the house, if I remember correctly. If not, then they're over at the museum. And hello, Rumi. <laughs> what is this? Paper. One diamond for diamond pickers. Well, well, thank you. Thank you very much for that reminder of the thing that I was already doing. That's much appreciated. Yes, here we go. F a few diamonds hanging around. A couple of diamond blocks worth, actually. I didn't realize I'd left that many here. All right, so we drop a diamond here. Boop. Tick. And... Anything? Oh, there is one. <gasps> Look at that. Magical things. It should maybe it should be slightly more clearly signposted that the <laughs> the product arrives here because goodness me, yeah, I I wasn't I assumed that this hole in the floor did something, but I wasn't entirely sure what. But that is awesome, good stuff. Diamond for a diamond pickaxe, and it says please drop one at a time because if you drop a ton in, then it probably locks up the hoppers or something. But that's beautiful. Good jobs, Loy. And I'm not sure if he's gotten these by nefarious means or if he's just started villager trading or something i don't know but i will take a diamond pickaxe i will put this in reserve maybe in the ender chest or something just so we can stash it away do i have an ender chest in here with Rumi? hello Rumi, how are you need to trade some more mending books with him at some point uh do i still have any i've got a few decent books in here if anybody still wants those then they are welcome to them of course but yeah, I don't know if I have an ender chest in my house, so we will have to go and drop that off at the museum. Speaking of the museum, today's episode is going to be not really progress at the museum, but progress at the museum site. I figured because we built those houses a little while ago, it was probably worth doing some interior decorating for those. So I figured I'd do that on camera with you guys as a bit of a break from the museum stuff. I have not really had a great deal of time to work on museum stuff this week. How's the nether hub going, by the way? It looks like the nether water out here has been gathered every now and again. Bit of magma block lighting going on right there. Uh, it looks like it's much the same as it was last time I stopped by, but no worries. Yeah, I've really not had a great deal of time to work on Minecraft stuff this week because work has been super busy and it's actually been really good getting stuck into a work routine for once. Like, I remember back in the day when I was working full-time, I only made like one decidedly vanilla episode a week for my channel and that was it. And... Recently, my output has been really high because I haven't had the work. And now I have the work, I feel slightly more obliged to get on with that and do a little bit less on the YouTube video production side. So I'm sorry if you guys are missing some of the series. And like I said before, they will return at some point. It's just getting the time, you know? And the time right now is a little bit scarce, but it means I'm making myself some money, which is really good because I need to make me some money. Now, let's drop off a few of these things in here because we're probably not going to need those for interior decorating. What we're going to do is do some interior decoration on these houses that I built over here in the time-lapse videos we did a little while ago because I've left them undecorated until now and I think they kind of deserve it because I'm really happy with the way these houses came out, especially this one. I modified the roof of this one ever so slightly just to kind of have that overhang instead of just kind of coming out to the top there and I like that a lot. I think it turned out pretty well 
and it's got a similar thing around the back, if I remember correctly. Well, sort of, yeah, you can't really see it up there, but it's it's a little bit different, and I like the look of them a lot. I think they're nice, nice little rustic houses, still absolutely in love with red nether brick, and to be honest, kind of missing it when it comes to playing on my single-player series that I've started on Minecraft Pocket Edition. But as you can see, the inside of this is pretty much undecorated, aside from the floor in here and occasional little things like the ladder leading up to the first floor. No floors in here at all. We've got no real furnishings to speak of. So we're going to do a little bit of that today. Let's see what we've got in this chest. One of the things I was keen on decorating with, I'm always keen on decorating with, is bookcases. Because bookcases are probably the most detailed block in Minecraft without any other external stuff added to them. You know, like that and crafting tables are pretty awesome when it comes to interiors because they just add so much color and life to the place and detail without needing to fiddle around with item frames and armor stands and that kind of stuff that you guys know and love me for well hopefully you do anyway let's pop our iron blocks back in here as well got a decent healthy supply of those and some extra diamonds over here so we're doing pretty well for those now uh bookshelves there they are yes Yes, had plenty of those in here. Probably bring an enchanting table as well, because why not? Because I've already got an enchanting setup back at spawn, back at uh, Farhaven, rather, that I can use. So I figure we'll probably bring in an enchanting table here and use it as a prop, as a piece of furniture, as opposed to a practical enchanting table, which is something I don't really do all that often, but it makes a lot of sense in a way. There's like a, it's almost got like a lectern feel to it. And let's be real, I want to move that chest out of the way because that chest is <laughs> blocking the entrance to this house for no apparent reason. So let's get started. Let's get started upstairs because what I really wanted to do up here so the thing about having these roofs like this is it creates an overhang and it creates a gap between the roof and the supporting the supporting wood, the supporting structure. And I think this gap is really nicely filled in with bookshelves. I think that's a, a fantastic way to do that. And we can probably put like a lighting block in there, maybe a redstone lamp or something, but we'll do with a torch for now because I don't have a redstone lamp on me. There's a jack-o'-lantern there, actually. Let's, let's put one of those in there instead <laughs> for now at least and maybe turn it sideways just so we have yeah so we don't have that jack-o'-lantern texture looking at us <laughs> it's like the trickster has come back from beyond the grave or well is he ever really dead i don't know i don't know you guys so we'll fill a bunch of those in with bookshelves and already this feels like a kind of cozy reading nook you know we can maybe get rid of that one yes we can because that doesn't actually have any exterior facing sides so that's good that's good i like that a lot that's already looking quite nice and we can add in a couple of extra little details we could maybe add some armor stand stuff if we wanted to it's it's kind of it's nice to take a break from doing hyper detailed stuff every now and again but look at that that's already looking pretty nice it's got character we might add in a couple of blocks up here do i have i have some oak wood that's fantastic i was hoping i would have some of that in my inventory because now we can let's see build us a crafting table a crafting table is going to be necessary for up here anyway so let's maybe replace the opposite side over here we can have reading on this side and then maybe like a little workshop area maybe like a desk or something on this side how about that this is kind of how I build. I sort of speculate about what stuff could go where as I'm building it. I don't necessarily go in with a perfect plan all the time. You guys may know this about me already if you followed me for a while, but yeah, I tend to kind of wing it occasionally and it works out in my favor a lot of the time. I think I do all right. But now we've got a little bit of depth to this wall over here. We've got some slabs that look like extra shelves. We could maybe throw in a trap door or two if we wanted to here and there. But if we maybe put a couple more up there as well, this already looks like a nice little area for storing stuff. And maybe an item frame or two, maybe a sign or two here and there on the shelves. We could even possibly put a sign over the front of that jack-o'-lantern and that would make it look a little bit different to how it looks already. Signs always got that oak wood texture so it fits in quite well with the surroundings like that. Yeah, that, that could be okay. It's not the best, but it'll do. It'll do for now. So... Over here, we're going to have a little crafting area, sure. So we need to make ourselves a desk. And I kind of want to start doing that out of a different kind of wood because then you, you get that oak wood fatigue, right? Where the floor is made of oak wood, the shelves are made of, out of oak wood. If the desk is made out of oak wood too, it just looks like it's grown out of the floor instead of being placed there by hand. So we will 
figure out something to do with that. I don't really have any of that kind of material. I've got dark oak wood, which might actually do all right, thinking about it. Might do all right with that. So let's start off with some stair blocks, and we need to place those facing that way, I think, probably like that. So this is rapidly evolving into a kind of bureau, I guess. One of those things that has... It's a desk that has a a storage space in it, and we'll need to get rid of that torch again and replace it with something else. But I don't want to put a jack-o'-lantern in here because then it'd just be really obvious and orange. <laughs> but if we put something like that in, then it still feels like the chest has some storage space in there. In fact, I'm not sure... Because 1.10, I think, changed the way chests interact with certain blocks like stairs and slabs like if you put a top half slab down now over the chest like that oh you can still open it okay maybe i'm mistaken about that then but there was i'm pretty sure if you put like a set of stairs over it at one point it wouldn't open the chest maybe that was a bug or something maybe that was a bug they fixed but yeah that's that's that so now this looks like it has some storage space in it that you could maybe store like writing implements or something. It'd be kind of nice immersion to have like a book and quill or something in there maybe. I don't know. That'd be kind of cool. We'll put the signs on here and on here because that way it looks like they have pull out drawers or something even though these aren't necessarily practical for storage. Something like that. And that's a pretty simple detail. It's not got a lot of, you know, a huge amount of detail put into it but I think that looks pretty nice. We need to put a chair in front of it. And we could go the whole minecart chair route with that, maybe. Now we have a bit of extra iron, we may as well, right? So let's go and grab one of those real quick. I wonder if I have any spruce wood outside of here. I'm a little bit worried that creepers are going to come and get me in a second. Yes, I do. Okay, quickly, retreat. <laughs> there we go. Right, let's grab ourselves a spruce wood door to go as the back for this minecart chair, which is looking pretty good so far. Trapdoors on either side. I used to make these with a slab underneath so you could attach the trapdoors to them, but now... Of course, with it being 1.9 plus, I don't need to do that because trapdoors can just be placed anywhere. Thank you so much, Mojang, for that. So nice to be able to place trapdoors everywhere for detailing. Works every time. So now all we need to do is pop a spruce door on like that. And that's a really nice looking chair. I really like that a lot. <laughs> People use trapdoors as wheels a lot. So this kind of looks like a, a, a back chair with kind of like wheels on either side but I think it's going to look all right. Now, one of the things I really kind of want to do with this is have like a flower pot on the desk somewhere so it looks like there's a, an ink well or something like that, but I don't think you can place those in the same block as you can signs. So we may have to either add like a little extension table to here, maybe extend it out one block, or just forget that idea because that's, that's a cool idea for the detail of this, but to be honest, I'm not going to be in here looking at it all that much, so I'm not sure if I really need to expend that much effort on the detail. So next, I kind of want to do something a little bit more abstract with the bookcase situation over here. So we're going to have these either side like that, and I've got a couple of oak fences that we can have coming down from the roof like so. And... Let's see if that's a decent sort of height for it. Yeah, I kind of want to have these just hanging bookshelves. <laughs> they just seem like an, an, an interesting idea, not something that you see really in everyday libraries in general. In fact, let's... I've got... I haven't got enough oak wood fences on me, but I have these spruce fences that I'm not using. So why not... Why not mix up the wood a little bit? Why not have it like that? That way. I just realised... I'm not sure if I put any torches and stuff up there, but I'm a little bit worried that mobs might be able to spawn up there on the on the roof, <laughs> on the, on that beam, so maybe we should keep an eye on that. But yeah, in the meantime, we can, we can pop these kind of dangling bookshelves down like that, which I think look kind of cool. That's kind of an interesting way of doing it. I'm not sure if it's really, you know, the kind of thing that you would see in everyday life, but what the heck, this is Minecraft. Let's, let's, go, let's go a little crazy here. Let's also add some slabs to the bottom of that. You can still walk underneath them. They're still two and a half blocks high, but... That just kind of means they have a little bit of texture to them because that one pixel thick texture on the underside of bookshelves, I I always feel like that's, that looks a little bit flimsy. That looks like it's just going to cave in or something, you know? Maybe they're not particularly heavy books. I don't know. But this is looking pretty good so far. I'm liking this. I'm liking this a lot. One thing I think that's absolutely essential is to get a little bit of carpet in because carpet really makes a change to a floor that you could otherwise leave sort of unchanged. I think having like a rug pattern here is going to be kind of important and we need two different colours at least for this. But this is 
this is going to be the pattern. So we'll have quite a long rug down the center of the room like so. And we'll, yeah, we'll copy the pattern, say, like here. So we'll go across there like that. And then, yeah, rug design is, is actually something that's kind of overlooked in Minecraft. People tend to just kind of put carpet down here and there. And it works a lot of the time. But I think it's really nice to have a kind of central design to work around. So we'll go two colors, maybe three. Let's see how that works for us. Let's go with something like that to start off with, and then we'll fill in the rest of these gaps with one or maybe two other colours. We'll see how that works out. Ladies and gentlemen, the husks have arrived. <laughs> of course they have. Of course they have. We've got ourselves some zombie villagers as well. I'm pretty sure the villagers in my breeder are safe these days, though, so nothing to worry about. But, oh, goodness me. Haven't had a, much of a chance to interact with the husks in general, so <laughs> kind of fun to see them popping out of the woodwork every now and again. Excuse me, sir. Leave my villagers alone. Thank you very much. I'm pretty sure they don't want to trade with you. <laughs> All right, let's go grab some more wool from the sheep farm over here. I have been using most of the wool to block out the rooms at the museum, but we will see what we can do with what we've got in here. Let's put the grey wool back in there. And grey would go pretty well. Should we try dark green? I'm thinking dark green and maybe... Ah, baby husk! A baby husk! The garden gnome has come to take his revenge. Well, he's not going to get it. His revenge is basically going to be in the form of me being hungry for a couple of seconds. But that's all. <laughs> How long does that last for? Seriously, is that the same as eating rotten flesh? Maybe it is. I don't know. But yeah, we need to grab ourselves some... I think dark green will be good... And probably some yellow as well. I'll just put the string in there. So yeah, let's grab some yellow. Let's try light grey, dark green, and yellow. Bit of an odd colour combination, but I think we can make it work. Okay, that's not looking too bad. That's a very nice, very large carpet. And if we want to, we could replace the occasional block here and there with green wool. And then we'll have to figure out what it's going to do to the ceiling of the room below. Because now obviously we have something like this going on but maybe we could incorporate that into a lighting feature for down here maybe if we could get it to look symmetrical on both sides it could look a little bit more planned i don't know we'll we'll figure out what that's gonna how that's gonna affect down here but i think that carpet's looking pretty good i like that a lot one last thing we need i think for this area is a bed or two here and there and i think i'm probably going to go with traditional beds how about that because let's face it we we won't sleep in here but it does feel like it needs a traditional bed Let's uh, let's make that out of probably spruce, seeing as that's what I have the most of right now. I think two beds will probably be good. We'll have maybe one one either side of here like this, so it's not going to be like a double bed situation, but it feels like two people could live here if they wanted to. It's got like a nice headboard, and you can step up here to take a look out the window first thing in the morning, that kind of thing. We could maybe do with some curtains on here as well, so if I make some banners that would be kind of cool let's make a couple of yellow banners like this and it can have yellow curtains inside of here just hanging over like that either side of there kind of kind of lends something to the room i guess kind of looks like it they, they've at least tried to cover up the windows a little bit and this has the trapdoor thing over the window on this side which kind of diffuses the fact that you can see into it from the outside i think you know it's not the kind of thing that would completely obscure the window but enough to give them a little bit of privacy shall we say so this is going okay. I think this is quite a nice little interior. We could probably do a lot more to it in terms of detail, but I'll probably catch up with that off camera and show you guys the progress on that in a future episode. But that's going to be it for today. Hope you've gathered a little bit of inspiration of your own from this little interior design video. My name has been Pixel Riffs. Thank you so much for watching Decidedly Vanilla. Please leave a like on it if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you want to see more, and I'll see you guys soon. Bye for now.